Hello and welcome to another episode of The Mindset Forge, a podcast where we discuss the best ideas of humanity, the most useful practices and the most skillful means for developing a more well-adjusted and adaptive mindset. To do this, I will be discussing latest science, ancient philosophy that has stood the test of time, as well as the thoughts and actions of important historical paragons. The goal is to give you tools and practices and ideas for your self-improvement with the goal of moving ahead the entire humanity. Our discussion will focus on the ideas and practices with the most cash value, so practices that are easy to take up but hold enormous potential. And since most of these practices have to do with changing your thinking and attitudes, they are completely free. Call me Laurent Lohel, I will be your host, and welcome aboard. Also, make sure to like Mindset Forge on Spotify and YouTube, as well as check out our Discord server, where you can find links to my book, which you can buy on Amazon to support my another side enterprise of being a fiction author. Without further ado, let's get to the episode. Mindset Forge, episode 19, Mind Over Matter and more. It is a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable. Socrates. Welcome back to another episode of Mindset Forge. I hope you are ready to delve into the realm of the extraordinary, where mind and willpower can seemingly transcend the limits of our physical reality. We all have moments when we doubt our abilities, moments when we feel bound by our limitations, physical or otherwise. But what if we could take a peek into the edges of human potential, those outer liars that boggle our minds and challenge our perceptions of what's possible. Today we are going to venture into that territory, not as sightseers into the realm of superhuman feats, but as explorers in the land of mindset and self-belief. Before we start, it's important to underline why we are looking at such extreme examples today. It's not about setting impossible benchmarks for ourselves or attempting to replicate these feats. Rather, it's about realizing the power that our minds have over our bodies, our lives and our destinies. It's about recognizing that within each of us there's a well of untapped potential, a force that can guide us towards our individual versions of success. We'll examine some of the most remarkable instances of mind over matter, from hypnosis and its implications to the bewildering shifts within the bodies and minds of those with dissociative identity disorder. We'll look at feats of extreme endurance and the resilience of the human spirit, the wonders of pain tolerance and the surprising capabilities we can unlock when we truly put our minds to it. So buckle up and get ready to expand your horizons, to be inspired and perhaps to look at your own potential through a new lens. Let's take this journey together and see just how powerful our mindsets can be when we learn to trust in them, and more importantly, in ourselves. Alright, let's kick off our exploration by looking at some of the amazing physical feats humans have achieved. Feats that really push the boundaries of what we might think is possible. Let's start with a name many of you might already know, David Goggins. Goggins is often referred to as the toughest man alive, and his accomplishments give some credence to that moniker. He is the only member of the US Armed Forces to complete SEAL training, US Army Ranger School and Air Force Tactical Air Controller training. 
he's completed over 60 ultra marathons, triathlons and ultra triathlons, setting new course records and regularly placing in the top 5. He also once held the Guinness World Record for pull-ups, completing 4030 in 17 hours. What's even more impressive than Gogin's physical achievements is his mental toughness and the philosophy that he preaches. His belief is that most of us only tap into 30% of our capabilities and it's through pushing ourselves physically and mentally that we can break through our perceived limitations. He calls this callousing the mind. When we are facing a difficult task, we should be excited because we know this is an opportunity to improve ourselves, to harden our resolve and become better. Let's move on to discuss some of the most demanding physical challenges known to man. These endurance events push participants to their absolute limits, often demanding days or even weeks of continuous exertion. Completing such an event might sound impossible, yet people accomplish them year after year, showcasing the amazing capabilities of human willpower and endurance. Consider the Marathon de Sables, a six-day, 251km ultramarathon, roughly the equivalent of six regular marathons. It takes place each year in southern Morocco in the Sahara Desert. The temperatures can easily reach over 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Yet participants have to carry all their food, clothes and sleeping gear for the entire race, while race organizers provide only water and a place to sleep. Then there's the Idi Tarod Trail Invitational the world's longest winter ultra marathon by fat bike, foot and ski. It follows the historic Iditarod Trail from Knik, Alaska, over the Alaska Range to McGrath and to Nome in midwinter. The short race is only 350 miles. The long race all the way to Nome is 1000 miles. And of course there's the Wendy Globe, a round the world non-stop solo yacht race that pushes sailors to their absolute limit. Competitors spend months at sea facing enormous waves, howling winds and the ever-present risk of capsizing in the remote and frigid southern ocean. The race is often referred to as the Everest of the seas. These events and the incredible individuals who complete them demonstrate that human beings are capable of extraordinary feats of endurance when they put their minds to it. They show us that our bodies and minds are far more resilient and powerful than we often give them credit for. These examples serve as inspiration for us to push our own boundaries and strive for our personal bests, whether in sport, in work or in life in general. Another example of the amazing effect of discipline, willpower and passion is Diane Nuad, a swimmer. At the age of 64, Nuad became the first person to swim from Cuba to Florida without the aid of a shark cage, a feat that had been attempted by many but completed by none. The journey spans 110 miles across the treacherous straits of Florida an area known for its unpredictable weather, strong currents and dangerous marine life, including sharks and venomous jellyfish. Nuat's historic swim began on the morning of August 31st, 2013 from Havana, Cuba and ended approximately 53 hours later when she reached the shores of Key West, Florida on September 2nd. Over the course of her swim, Nuad had to contend not only with physical exhaustion, but also dehydration, hypothermia and painful jellyfish stings. It is reported that she lost nearly 15 pounds during her grueling swim. What's remarkable about Nuad's achievement is not only the physical feat itself, but also the persistence and mental fortitude it took to get there. Nyad made her first attempt at this swim in 1978, when she was in her late 20s and was unsuccessful. 
She made three more attempts between 2010 and 2012, each time facing insurmountable obstacles that forced her to abandon her quest, but each failure only seemed to strengthen her resolve, and she finally achieved her dream in 2013 on her fifth try. Niad's story is a testament to the power of the human will and serves as a reminder that it's never too late to achieve your dreams. As Nayad herself put it upon completing her historic swim, never ever give up, you are never too old to chase your dreams. Moving from endurance to martial arts, we find examples of practitioners who've combined incredible physical prowess with mental discipline to achieve astounding feats. For instance, martial artists who use their hands or feet to break solid bricks, a feat that requires not just strength, but precision, timing, and most of all, the mental fortitude to push through pain and fear. In various cultures around the world we find rites of passage that demand remarkable self-control and resilience. In the Brazilian Amazon, young Satir Mave boys prove their manhood by putting their hands into gloves filled with bullet ants. Known for their extremely painful stings, they must endure this pain for a full 10 minutes often repeating the ritual multiple times. Different grueling tests of willpower are found all around the world. These examples are awe-inspiring not just because of the physical capabilities they showcase, but because they highlight the immense power of the human mind, the power of will, determination and self-belief. They are a testament to our ability to transcend physical discomfort, to endure and to persist. Next, we move into examples that are truly mind-bending, examples where individuals have used their willpower to overcome not just discomfort or physical challenges, but to face even death without flinching. As we explore these examples, you will notice that they come primarily from Hindu and Buddhist traditions, illustrating the immense focus these philosophies place on the development of the mind and willpower. Let's start with Amar Bharat a man from India who decided to raise his right hand to the sky and has not put it down for over 40 years. This is not an easy feat by any means. The arm has become unusable, the muscles atrophied and the pain must have been unimaginable. But Amar Farad has not wavered. He undertook this extreme act of devo devotion as a symbol of his unwavering dedication to his beliefs, demonstrating the incredible power of human will and endurance. Next, we look at the tragic but powerful example of Thich Guang Duc, a Vietnamese Buddhist monk who, in 1963, performed self-immolation in a busy Saigon intersection to protest against the persecution of Buddhists by the South Vietnamese government. What struck observers was not just the act itself, but the manner in which he conducted it. He sat calmly in the lotus position, doused himself in petrol and lit a match. Witnesses reported that he did not make a sound or move a muscle while he was burning. This profound example of mental fortitude and tranquility in the face of extreme pain is still revered and remembered. Finally, we turn to a practice known as Soku Shinbutsu, observed by Buddhist monks primarily in Japan. It is a form of asceticism where in monks undergo years of stringent dieting, meditation and other rituals, gradually leading their bodies into a state of mummification while still alive. This extreme form of self-sacrifice is undertaken with the belief of reaching a higher plane of enlightenment. These examples are deeply intertwined with the religious beliefs and practices, but they undeniably showcase the staggering power of human will. They serve as reminders that the mind can have profound control over our bodies, our experiences and our perception of reality. Of course, these are extreme examples and not a path that most of us will or should take but they can inspire us to harness our willpower in our day-to-day -day lives, to face our challenges with fortitude and to push the boundaries of our own perceived limitations. 
one can use their willpower to overcome not just themselves of course but the surrounding society as well standing alone against enemies that vastly outnumber and overpower them a powerful and historic example of individual will and bravery going against the grain is the story of the unknown tank man during the 1989 Tiananmen Square protest in Beijing, China. On June 5th, 1989, on the day after the Chinese government's violent crackdown on the pro-democracy protesters, a solitary man carrying two shopping bags walked into the middle of Chang'an Avenue and stood in front of a column of Type 59 tanks leaving Tiananmen Square. As the lead tank tried to go around him, he stepped to the side to block its path, repeating this action several times. At one point he even climbed onto the tank and appeared to converse with the soldiers inside. After a brief period, he was whisked away by two unintended unidentified individuals who came out of the crowd. This act of non-violent defiance was captured by photographers and broadcast globally, becoming an iconic image of resistance. Despite his significant international recognition, the identity of Tank Man and his fate remains unknown even today. Such individual defiance can also be found in Rosa Parks' refusal to give up her bus seat to a white passenger in Montgomery, Alabama in 1955. Her simple act of disobedience sparked the Montgomery Bush boycott and played a pivotal role in the civil rights movement in the United States. Similarly, the actions of Malala Yousafzai, a young Pakistani activist, represent an incredible demonstration of courage and willpower. In defiance of the Taliban's ban on female education, Malala not only continued to advocate for girls' rights to education, but also became the youngest ever Nobel Prize laureate. These examples demonstrate that one person's act of bravery, resilience and determination can have a profound impact, inspiring others and challenging oppressive norms and systems. These are all examples of one using their own willpower for their goals during what can be assumed to be normal state of consciousness, but what could be achieved during an altered state of consciousness. And to answer this question, let's look at hypnosis. Hypnosis. The word itself can conjure up images of stage shows, mesmerizing pendulums and individuals barking like dogs or clucking like chickens on command. While this entertaining side of hypnosis has its place, it's far from the whole picture. In its most basic form, hypnosis is a technique that allows for a heightened state of focus, suggestibility and relaxation. It involves guiding someone into a trance-like state where their attention is narrowly focused and they are open to suggestions. This state is not unlike being so absorbed in a good book or a movie that you lose track of time and your surroundings. You are fully conscious, but you tune out most stimuli around you. Now, not everyone is equally susceptible to hypnosis. Hypnotizability, or one's ability to be hypnotized, varies greatly among individuals. Some people are highly responsive to hypnotic suggestions and can easily enter a trance-like state, while others may struggle with letting go and allowing the process to occur. And then there are those to fall somewhere in the middle. Hypnosis isn't just a party trick or stage performance. In healthcare, Hypnotherapy is used as a tool to manage a variety of health issues and to promote positive behavior changes. This includes things like weight management, quitting smoking, reducing stress, managing pain and even improving sleep. However, while many swear by the positive effects of hypnosis, it remains somewhat of a mystery in the scientific community. There's still much debate about how it works and its full potential in various fields, but as we'll soon discuss, there's a growing body of evidence that points to some truly astounding effects. Hypnosis can have both on the mind and the body. Certainly, 
the more fascinating aspects of hypnosis lies in its potential to create measurable physical changes in the body. It's one thing to say that hypnosis can alter our perceptions or help us manage our symptoms, but it's another thing altogether to claim that it can physically alter our bodies. And yet, there are studies that point towards this being possible. Perhaps the most striking example, at least to a heterosexual man like myself, comes from studies of hypnosis-induced breast enlargement. In a series of experiments conducted in the 1970s, researchers found that women who underwent hypnosis to visualize breast growth actually experienced a noticeable increase in breast size. The results were quite remarkable, with an average increase of about 1.5 inches. While the mechanism behind these changes aren't fully understood, the research suggests that hypnosis may be able to influence physical growth and development. In another study, hypnosis was shown to have a remarkable effect on wound healing. Patients who underwent major surgical procedures were given post-operative hypnosis, which included suggestions for increased wound healing. The patients who received the hypnosis had significantly faster healing, less post-operative pain and fewer complications compared to those in the control group. Similarly, other studies have shown that hypnosis can influence the immune system. Researchers have found that hypnotic suggestions can lead to changes in immune cells and inflammation markers, suggesting that hypnosis might have real physical effects on the body's immune response. These findings are part of a growing body of evidence showing that our minds can have a profound impact on our bodies. The ability of hypnosis to create physical change in the body challenges traditional views of mind-body separation and opens up exciting new possibilities for therapeutic interventions. However, it should be noted that more research is needed to fully understand these phenomena and to determine the limits and best uses of hypnosis in medical settings. Next, I have included direct quotations from various scientific papers discussing the proven effects of hypnosis. Evidence-based hypnotic interventions for this to happen, it is critical that the patient's complaint be one for which there is a strong research base supporting the value of hypnotic treatment. There is good research support for the application of hypnosis for anxiety disorders, depression, including major depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, stress management, sleep disorders, smoking cessation, weight management, and eating disorders and the addictions. There is also strong research support for the use of hypnosis for acute and chronic pain, irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, skin conditions including psoriasis, chemotherapy-induced nausea, and pediatric problems such as anxiety, school phobia, and recurrent abdominal pain. Hypnosis for acute pain in 2010, the American Psychological Association published Clinical Hypnosis for Pain Control by David Patterson. In his book, Patterson presented a table of 21 controlled hypnosis studies, 18 of which were randomized with acute pain disorders. These studies included the treatment of burn wounds and deprivement pain, bone marrow aspiration pain, labor pain, pain flowing, chemotherapy for cancer, pain during angioplasty, pain during plastic surgery, pain related to large core needle biopsies of the breast and multiple other surgical pain situations. The outcome of these studies showed that in all cases hypnosis was as at least equal to the existing standard of care. In the majority of studies hypnosis proved more beneficial than the standard of care or other treatment controls, which included attention control, relaxation, emotional support, medication, meaning lorazepam, cognitive behavior therapy, deep breathing, and non-directed play for children. The current meta-analysis showed, on the basis of nine randomly controlled trials, evidence of effective hypnosis treatment in view of managing pain intensity and pain interference with 
daily activities in chronic musculoskeletal and neuropathic pain patients. This is the first time that an efficacy threshold has been identified based on the number of sessions showing that eight or more sessions should lead to moderate to large effects and that fewer than eight sessions should yield little or no effect. All in all, these findings suggest that hypnosis treatment may represent an effective and complementary approach to the management of chronic pain. Hypnosis has also been used for anesthesia in dentistry and obstetrics to ease labor pains. Sleep, despite the limitations associated with the current review and overall state of research, hypnotherapy for sleep problems appears to be promising treatment to explore with little evidence of any adverse effects. Hypnosis has also many applications in dermatology, although rather underutilized ones. Hypnosis has been used to treat verrucous neurodermatitis psoriasis and hyperhidriosis. It is also useful complementary therapy helping lessen stress and make one scratch one's acne less, leading to less scarring. Hypnosis is also used by athletes who wish to make use of every single possible tool to perform at their best, but as Lars Erik Unestal comments in his article Alert Eyes Open Sport Hypnosis Sport hypnosis can have positive effects for everyone, and he encourages other people to consider how the same methods could be used in fields other than sport. The author explains how the purpose of sport hypnosis is to induce the sport hypnotic state, which is the term used for the flow state during sports such as running. The flow state, meaning the sport hypnotic state, is a state of consciousness that is alert yet relaxed, and the feeling of required effort decreases so one can perform at their best without losing focus and not feel overexerted, increasing results despite decreased feeling of effort. Some quotations from the paper. Hypnosis can be achieved by various formal and informal inductions based on one or more of the following six suggestions. 1. Decreased exteroceptive stimulation and or motor activity. 2. Increased exteroceptive stimulation and or motor activity. 3. Sudden increase of negative emotions, especially fear. 4. Increased active concentration and mental involvement. 5. Decreased critical functions, thought control and directed thinking. And 6. Somatic psychic relations, where hypnosis and hypnotic like states can be induced by fasting, drugs, and so on. Traditional inductions based on relaxation, dissociation, and motor inactivity, items 1 and 4 from the previous list and the traditional alert hypnosis induction item 2 have, in most studies, given rise to the same kind of hypnotic state. Interestingly, Banuai found a small difference. Active alert inductions were significantly more likely to be associated with reports of joyful dreams, and note that a sudden increase in fear item 3 often produces a hypnotic-like state of immobility and catalepsy. End quote. More on the flow state. There are several subjective experiences that define the flow state or the sport hypnotic state. These include time appearing to pass more slowly while relevant objects seem to be larger. Like Pia Hansen, an Olympic ski champion, reported, quote, As a peak performer, I have to establish a good relation and communication between mind and body, not by command and effort by true mental images, triggers and trust. In this flow state, the pigeons look bigger and seem to move slower." End quote. There is also a sense of automaticity, so events seem to take place automatically without conscious control. One's body seems to move on its own without conscious control, effortlessly. Like the archery world champion answered when asked how she knew when she was going to shoot, quote, I do not know, but my body knows. The shot comes by itself when my body is ready. I do not have to think, 
end quote. Another difference was that the champion's arrow was released through an IDO motor system which involved less tremor than shots released through the other shooter's voluntary decisions. There may be a sense of dissociation, sometimes even total amnesia following the sport hypnotic state. Another more objectively measurable effects of the sport hypnotic state include change in EEG patterns, reduction in cortisol, increased beta endorphins and immunomodulating capacity and increase in self-regulating capacities. And how would one go about inducing this flow state to maximize performance during a sport event? For endurance activities it is often achieved on its own. For example, runners have been shown to enter flow state in 21 minutes on average on a run. However, some never enter it this way, while for others flow happens in mere minutes. The author coined the term meditative running, where he instructed runners to write down a problem they had and then go running in a familiar track in a forest, staying below of 70% of maximum heart rate. And they were not allowed to think about the problem they wrote down. In this test they entered the flow state in 10 minutes on average. However, for non-endurance performance like golf or 100 meter run, Another method to induce sport hypnotic state were needed, namely triggers. While the word hypnosis likely calls to mind going to hypnotist, this paper reports that those who learned hypnosis without external helper were in better control after six months. Compared to those who trained with an actual hypnotist, it was found that recorded hypnosis sessions were as effective as being with hypnotist physically. What kind of effects could be achieved with these triggers implanted in post-hypnotic state? The author reports that, quote, I found that any stimulus, a word, gesture or thought could become a post-hypnotic signal for either a specific response or a general emotional state. The stimulus was given a new meaning during hypnosis after which the word tired could release a feeling of alertness or sad a feeling of joy. Labor contractions and pain, an experience of relaxed pressure, grabbing a golf club for total concentration, and so on. Thus, the subject could decide both the stimulus and the signal released effect." End quote. The author then explains how this training includes learning to relax the muscles to read relaxed effectiveness, learning recovery and entering the sport hypnotic state. Once a degree of self-hypnosis is achieved, the trainee learns and develops alternative systems of control, where the dominant system, voluntary and effort-based control, is complemented with control through images and triggers. In this stage there are four success factors, self-image, goal images, attitudes and emotional control. Special emphasis in self-image training is placed on self-esteem and in the goal area on goal programming, which is an important alternative and complement to intellectual goal setting and rational and action plans. Programmed goals will serve as autopilots directing the automation of life toward the goals. This is especially important in athletic situations where pre-competitive and programmed goals will lead to the body to excellent performance without having to think. The training also includes increasing mental toughness and emotional control. Like mentioned before, one should be able to use these same methods in different areas where increased performance is desired. After all, the flow state can be beneficial and quite pleasant in any field. You can try and use these methods to maximize your performance in the area of your interest and to reach your goals without having to exert any effort, like letting the river take you to your destination by simply floating along.
Next, let's move away from hypnosis and venture into a phenomenon that seems to defy all logic. Dissociative identity dies disorder, formerly known as multiple personality disorder. This is a mental health condition where an individual has two or more distinct personalities or alters, each with its own patterns of perceiving, relating to and thinking about the environment and self. What makes dissociative identity disorder particularly fascinating in the context of our discussion is the extent to which these distinct personalities can differ, not only in terms of their beliefs, attitudes and behaviors, but also in terms of their physical and physiological characteristics. In some reported cases one personality might be diabetic, while others are not. The same is true for allergies, asthma and even eye color. That is, a person might show symptoms of a certain allergy or condition in one personality state and then not show those symptoms when they shift to another personality. It has even been reported that a person's eye color has changed as they shift personalities. Let me reiterate, this isn't to suggest that developing this dissociative identity disorder is a desirable goal or a path to self-improvement. Quite the contrary, dissociative identity disorder is often linked to severe psychological trauma and it can cause significant distress and dysfunction. However, it does provide a stunning example of just how powerful and far-reaching the effects of our mindset can be. It shows that when we change our minds, in this case quite literally, our bodies can change along with them. The mind-body connection is more profound and more influential than many of us ever realize. In the quest for personal growth and self-improvement, it's worth keeping these extreme examples in mind. They serve as a reminder of our untapped potential, of the capacity we all have to shape and redefine ourselves. Remember, your mindset is not just a set of beliefs. It's a force that can influence every aspect of your life, down to your very physiology. All right, good listeners, we have come to the end of yet another journey through the mysteries and marvels of the mind. Let's pause and reflect on the key insights we've unearthed along the way. We've looked at the sheer force of will, exemplified by extreme physical feats and endurance. We've marveled at the incredible human capacity for resistance and resilience in the face of unimaginable adversities. We've learned about the power of hypnosis, which can bring about both subjective changes in perception and objective physical changes. In a way, it's a clear testimony of the mind's ability to mold our bodies. And then we have delved into the extraordinary realm of dissociative identity disorder, a testament to the mysterious and profound interconnectedness between our mental states and our physical reality. But remember, the idea is not to become a self-mummifying monk, a record-breaking endurance athlete or a human subject of hypnosis experiments. The objective is to expand our understanding of what's possible, to reinforce our belief in the potency of the mind and to inspire us to unlock our own potential in whichever way suits us best. Thank you for joining me on this journey of discovery. I hope you found this episode as thought-provoking and fascinating as I did and found some inspiration to strengthen your willpower to power through obstacles, at least until you master your mind and learn to achieve your goals effortlessly. Keep forging your mindsets and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Mindset Forge. I hope you found it informative and the lessons and practices spoken in it relevant to your situation. I also hope you found it as entertaining to listen as I found making it to be. If you found it beneficial, be sure to follow Mindset Forge on Spotify as well as on YouTube where you can also give us a thumbs up. 
Also, make sure to check out our Discord server for further discussion where you can contact me directly. Links in description and channel information. There you can also find the link to my book which I have self-published on Amazon called Death Drive. If speculative dystopian near future sci-fi sounds like a cup of tea, getting the book is a great way to support my work as an author. So have a nice day and memento, querebrum formare.